This video introduces the web-based simulation interface controls that allow you to run and operate your simulations within Viral. You're going to start by logging into the user workspace management interface, but not as UWM admin, but rather as guest. You're going to switch to the user view. And from here, we now have a series of options. The repositories function enables us to clone or copy in files from a remote Git-based repository location. So we're able to place in the path field, the location of the Git repository we want to clone or copy in, enter a password if required, and just press clone. This then copies down the complete content of that Git repository, and now we have a local copy. We can refresh that by using the refresh or delete it. Browsing within the structure, we then see all of the various files that have been posted. And we're then able to select from these files. If we select the viral file, we're presented with the raw XML. Pressing preview then shows us our topology. And if we want, we can then use quick launch to start that simulation. Going back to My Sessions and then pressing the Launch New Session button presents us with a new menu. From here, I can then select the source of my file, be that local, remote, or even from the Git repo that we just showed you. I can select a direct URL or pick a local file from my file system. So I've selected the file, now I'm pressing preview, and that's going to give me the topology overview just like we saw previously. So this is the simulation that I'm going to launch. When the simulation's launched, we're then presented with this table where we have all the information about our nodes. Note that there are more lines here. So if we increase the size of our table, there we go, we can then see all of the various nodes that we have in our simulation. Carry on scrolling and we can then see if there are any traffic captures and our interface state information. As we refresh the table, we're then able to see the various nodes as they're starting to go through their phases as they come up. And with all of our nodes up, we then can see our external connectivity information if we want to use external terminal emulators. Notice the LXEs don't have serial information because they don't have serial ports. We can connect to console ports or the out of band management IP. And we're connecting to our serial port here. And all of this is operating within our web interface, so no actual use of an external terminal emulator. Here we're connecting to our out of band management IP interface. Taking a look at our routing table, and we can see all of our prefixes are present there. We're now going to take a look at some of the live visualization capabilities. So now I want to see my topology. And I'm going to use a function, which is the syslog capability. So we're going to press set up syslog. And this now logs into all of our various devices and sets them up to send all their messages through to a central syslog receiver. And here we can see that all coming through from all the various devices. Now, where does this come in handy? Well. Just as an example, we're going to shut down our OSPF process on this particular device. There's the command. And as we do that, the syslog messages from this particular device are then popping up in our syslog server. If we wait a moment, we then start to see the messages from the neighboring devices as the OSPF sessions have come down. I'm going to bring OSPF back up now. And there, towards the bottom, we can see there are new messages, and we can see that those have been populated as OSPF came back up. I now want to see what the impact is if I shut down my Layer 2 switched machine. So I can do this either from the Live Visualization function or from the node table. So I've issued the shutdown command, and we can see in our diagram, the interfaces just went red as the virtual machine went down. And if we look in our table, 
that node will now have gone into absent state. If we take a look at back at our syslog, we can then see OSPF sessions going down. And now I want to bring my node back up. So I can either do it from the diagram or I can do it from the table. So I can just select my node and then press start. And as that machine then comes back up into the rest of the topology, we see the interfaces have gone green. And as packets start to get exchanged, we then going through reconvergence. So we see the various syslog messages as everything comes back up into the normal state. Now I want to take a look at packet capture. Again, I can do this either from the diagram or I can do this from the table. So I can select, I'm doing this from the table in this case, I can select the particular interface I'm interested in set up the, the packet capture, and I'm going to set that for 60 seconds. When the traffic capture running, when we look in the table, we'll see that it's in running state true. When that expires, it flips to false, so that's now completed. And we can now grab our packet capture data, pull that down and open that directly in Wireshark. And here we can see that set of packets that we've just sniffed. Okay, so I've made changes to my environment. And I want to save those so I can select all the nodes, or just some of them, and then press Extract Config. And that's going to grab the configurations from all of the devices that I've selected and offer that back to me as a viral file, which I can then save locally and use the next time I want to start up my environment. And with that, I'm done. So I'm going to press Stop and terminate my simulation.